So about a month ago, I turned aspirin into picric acid. But now I want to test all of the big red salts. Let me explain. Picric acid in itself is of course an acid because it can give up an hydrogen ion. But it's also an explosive because of all of the nitro groups. It's not that good of an explosive though, because it can't explode on its own and needs another explosive to initiate the whole detonation. What we can do is replace the hydrogen ion with any metal to make a salt, and that will change the properties of the explosive. Which is just pretty amazing because most of the picrate salts can explode on their own with just heat, and that's what we call a primary explosive. And so our picrate salts are really the shards of explosives, because even though they are primaries, they're not too sensitive to be handled. Unlike some others like nitrogen trichloride or I don't love that, I don't do as he does. Moreover, on YouTube I've only seen the footage of let's say maybe three or four picrate salts, and this is really a shame because there is much more of them, maybe 50, I don't know. And they're beautiful as well. They have different colors depending on the metal used, ranging from orange to green. Now that we are convinced that picrates are the best explosives, let's make them. The first step is making the picric acid. It's not a hard synthesis, and I have a whole video dedicated on this if you want to watch. We usually start from aspirin and progressively add those nitro groups around the benzene ring. To do that, we need three chemicals. Our starting structure will be salicylic acid instead of aspirin, because I somehow have a bunch of it. Then we need our good old friend, the sulfuric acid, and some dry potassium nitrate. I won't go into much detail, but basically, we start by dissolving our salicylic acid in the concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. After some time, we add our dried cane tree slowly and heat some more. We crush out the crystals in ice water and filter. And finally, we do a recrystallization in hot water to get some pure crystals. Ok, now let's start to experiment with an already documented salt. Dunite, which is also known as ammonium picrate. I wanted to start with this one because it's the easiest to do, but don't worry, we'll make some other ones in a few minutes. To make the dunite, we should usually dissolve the picric acid in some water, but my ammonia solution is very diluted, only 11%, so I'm going to add it directly to the picric acid and heat it to make it soluble. The solution started to pick a more orangey color, and that was the dunite forming, so that's a good sign. Big crystals of dunite are red, but I don't want to make that much and we can check the pH of the solution to see if we need to add more ammonia. If it's acidic after some time, we can just add more, but if it's basic like here, we finished. Now we need to separate the donut crystals from the solution. Very simply, all of the picured salts are more soluble in hot water than in cold water, so if we cool down the solution to 0 degrees Celsius, we should see some donut crystals precipitating. Before cooling the beaker, I just evaporated some excess water and then just put the beaker outside in some snow. I came back 20 minutes later and some beautiful orangey red crystals precipitated and I just had to filter them. As with every salt, I'm going to test the energy check properties while wet and at the end of the video I will test them after drying. So this way we'll be able to do a comparison and rank those salts. Better. Damn, that was better than I thought. I didn't expect the salt to explode in such a way. I think it's better than the picric acid itself, but of course we can do much better with the metal salt. So now let's make a little harder one, sodium picrate. My first idea was to do the same as the dunite and directly add sodium hydroxide to a picric acid solution. But after doing the whole procedure and filtering, the crystals were very brown and they didn't have any explosive properties whatsoever. What I think could have happened is that the NaOH is such a powerful chemical that it broke the picric acid itself. So I had to use another chemical that was less harsh, but will still make the sodium salt. So after 3.69 seconds of thinking, I decided to try with a sodium carbonate solution. That way we can see the evolution of the reaction because it will produce bubbles of CO2 when reacting with the picric acid, and it won't destroy it. We make a sodium carbonate solution and the picric acid one as well. As expected when we add the sodium carbonate, we see bubbling and when we don't see any more, we stop adding and cool down again in snow. This time the solution was super cooling which means the crystal didn't want to precipitate and I had to initiate the crystal formation with some movement. And I just picked up the beaker and everything crystallized. Now we just have to filter as always. And this time the solid was a very shiny yellow, which is an excellent sign. Now let's test the red oh, solid. Nice. Yo. Okay, this one was even better in small amounts. Now let's do some transition metal salts. I first did a poll on the YouTube community tab to choose between many transition metals, and the first one that won was Cobalt. 
Then a friend of me wanted to see the nickel salt, so I said, all right, no problem. And then I decided copper because copper salts are most of the time blue, so I thought it was gonna be interesting, you know? So here we have our three contenders. contenders. The general procedure is more or less the same for all of those salts. We take any of the salt of the metal, like chloride or sulfate, and react it with the sodium carbonate from before. This will precipitate the metal carbonate, and then after filtering it, we can react it with the picric acid solution. Let's start with the cobalt salt. We first take some cobalt chloride 2 and precipitate out our pink cobalt carbonate. Then filter it and wash it with some water to make sure there is no sodium carbonate left and we add it to the picric acid solution. A beautiful orange color appears. We know when to stop adding the cobalt carbonate because we stop seeing bubbles of CO2 and if you add too much anyway, the solution will turn murky from the insoluble cobalt carbonate. Then I chilled it and filtered again. Cobalt be great, hell you buddy. I don't have any more filters, so I'm just using, you know, some paper towel. This works well, not gonna lie. The, the only problem is that it sucks up the liquid very fast. Like, but it's fine. Yay, felt right. Okay, boys, let's do a test of the cobalt peak rate. Take a small amount, put it to the metal paper. To do the nickel salt, I tried to use some old nickel chloride with the sodium carbonate, but it didn't seem to precipitate and the nickel chloride looked bad, so I decided to make some more. To do that, I just dissolved nickel metal in a hot mix of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. After half an hour, I removed the rest of the nickel that didn't react it, and I added sodium hydroxide to precipitate nickel hydroxide too. And now, you might ask, but wait, sodium hydroxide didn't work for the sodium salt, so why would nickel hydroxide work? Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, because sodium is an alkali metal. However, nickel is a transition metal, so the hydroxide should not destroy the picric acid. So then, we just add it and continue the procedure to get a wet nickel picrate. As you might see, the nickel picrate is a bit more darker than cobalt, and that is because nickel is green and picric acid is yellow, so the mix gave a bit of an orange-green color. And the explosion is quite good as well. Then. You have probably guessed what will be the color of the last salt, which is copper picrate. I just start the procedure with copper sulfate, which is widely available, and get some nice green copper picrate. I was expecting a blue salt and that surprised me for copper, but as I explained the picric acid yellow color is extremely strong and will probably alter every salt. Nice, now that we have done all of the wet test, let's dry those funny salts. By the way, while the salts are drying, join my Discord to have access to more information on the videos and talk with other chemists on many topics like electrochemistry, organic chem, rockets and energetics. Link in description. Okay boys, now the time has finally come. Here I have all the picrate salts are made and even just the picric acid. And we're gonna test all of them. Dry. Yo. Nickel. Yeah, nickel pick rate. Yo. Okay, we gotta rank them, don't we? So, I would put the pure picric acid at the bottom, because, you know, 
it is what it is. And I don't really know about the sodium and ammonia salt. So I'll let y'all decide who's the fourth and who's the fifth. And then the top three. Third, nickel picrate. Very cool, but nothing else. Second, copper picrate. More or less the same strength, but it's green. And finally, first, cobalt picrate, because it's as good as the other ones, but it also makes beautiful sparks when it burns on paper. My theory is that these little bits of cobalt metal are produced by the decomposition of the picrate, and then they are so small that they can burn on contact with air. Also, copper picrate could be on first as well, because it's not as toxic as the other two ones. So let's all decide. Anyway now, I destroyed all of the copper salts, except copper and nickel, as I had more of them, and they are useful as safe primaries. Anyway, please like and subscribe for more chemistry, and I'll see you next time. If you'd like to support me making more videos on more chemicals, and help me buy proper equipment, check out the Patreon, and take a look at the Discord as well. If you like this video, maybe check out this other one where I made Power Fork Nickel.